Okay, well, good morning, everyone. How is everybody? Wow, it's a beautiful day, right? It's sunny, not like yesterday, where it's, but of course, we, we are thankful for the rain. So, uh, since you had a farewell party for uh, the Uncle Andy and Auntie Tan, sorry I couldn't join you guys. Yeah. I, uh, some of our parents, I just, <laughs> I, 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 you know, some of, I joined some of our parents for a, a dim sum luncheon yes, yes, yes. Uh, yesterday morning, and I think I opened a dull to a little bit. The, uh, the spicy chili one was tasted so good at the time, but it really upset my stomach. <laughs> it really upset my stomach yesterday after. I was like, oh, I don't think I can make it to <laughs> So, so yeah, so so I uh, thank you, Mrs. Yip, for uh, sending the, the group photo. I, I was there in spirit. It's just, uh, I, <laughs> so, so, yeah. You owe so, them one. So I hope uh, you guys like uh, beef with broccoli. So that's what I was gonna bring last night. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, bringing, I'm gonna bring it for lunch uh, when we have lunch this afternoon. So, so that's where I was. Uh, I uh, was a little indisposed, and now I know. That even though it tasted so good, that that spicy chicken, it's not the first time. So I'm a whole lot for punishment. So, but that's what it was. So, so good morning again, everyone. Let's go and take a, a moment to uh, greet each other and uh, just to uh, to uh, you know just to yeah. Good morning. Yeah. So before we get started again, welcome again, everybody. Let's bow to the Lord in prayer to uh, uh, quiet our hearts and to get ready for um, just to receive his message this morning. Uh, so Father God, we thank you for this uh, beautiful Sunday morning, uh, for the opportunity to come before you, to humble ourselves, to glorify you here in church this morning. Um, we thank you for this uh, beautiful uh, weather. We thank you for the rain we had yesterday. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you now, Lord. Uh, so be with us, quiet our hearts, and help us to reflect and meditate uh, what it means uh, to obey you, Lord, um, to, uh, to uh, love you with all our heart, uh, mind, and soul, and to uh, be, uh, offer ourselves as living sacrifices to you. So uh, be with us now as we uh, ponder and meditate upon your word. And we pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So for the past uh, wow two years now, we've been uh, I've been using this uh, book called The Fundamentals of the Faith by uh, Pastor John MacArthur. So this is a, a lesson series, a series of thirteen lessons on the fundamentals of the faith, starting out with uh, what is the Bible, how we got the Bible, you know, uh, how did the uh, books. Uh, uh, you know, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, how are they selected um, to uh, in the canon of the Bible? And then we moved on to the attributes of each of the three persons of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then we moved on to, uh, you know, uh, practical aspects of uh, what it means to be a Christian. Um, so in more recent weeks, we talked about, uh, you know, one of our main commandments is to evangelize, is to tell others, to share the good news uh, with others. So that's uh, the uh, fundamental, one of the fundamental uh, missions that we have as Christians. And so uh, we finally come to the last two topics within this uh, 13 lesson series. And so this one uh, is on the topic of uh, obedience. So we're moving now from, uh, this is the first of two sermon topics that uh, wrap up your lessons. 12 and 13 of this uh, sermon series, uh, uh, this lesson series, that bring to a close this Fundamentals of the Faith lesson series. Uh, it challenges us to move beyond just learning about the fundamentals of the faith to applying what we learned. And so in this case, it is a, uh, to, uh, to live by faith and uh, out of obedience. And then um, next time, the last uh, lesson in the series will be on uh, discerning God's will and uh, uh, following Him. So it kind of wraps things up, and so it challenges us to apply, uh, you know, all the basics that we learned. Of course, for most of us, it's a review. Uh, for some of us, uh, it might be new uh, what we've covered the last two years, um, and for some of us, it may help have helped fill in some gaps, and you know, just to help us have a 
more uh, complete and full understanding. So I know I, for me, I did. You know, I had. Uh, you know, even though some of, most of it is review, it's also uh, you know I'm able to fill in some gaps in my understanding of uh, of uh, what it means uh, to be a follower of Christ. Um, so here we come to the uh, part about uh, obedience. Um, some uh, main points here is that, that we will go over in the next uh, session or two that I uh, have the privilege of uh, coming before you with a sermon message. Uh, main points, the desire to obey Christ is a mark of true salvation. So I'll go over, we will go over these uh, topics all, uh, uh, in, in greater depth as we move on into our sermon. Uh, obedience essential to a growing relationship with Christ. Uh, we'll also learn about, uh, you know, obedience is not just about you know, uh, putting together a list of do's and don'ts, uh, that's not the intent of, uh, you know, of our faith, but rather it's about knowing and serving Christ from the bottom of our hearts and seeking after his will. You know, it's always, uh, you know, well, what is, uh, what would Jesus do? You know, we've seen all those bumper stickers, right? We've seen, uh, you know, those things that uh, remind us, what would Jesus do in certain situations? So our our lifelong goal as Christians, of course, is to strive towards being more Christ-like. What would Jesus do to seek after the things above? And finally, we should answer the call to obedience and view ourselves as slaves of Christ. I know that, that in this day, it's a little bit of a loaded word, but uh, G, uh, Paul, when he wrote that, there were the two alternatives, slaves to uh, bond servants to sin or bond servants or slaves to Christ. So, of course, you know, as Christians, we, you know, uh, you know, we want to be slaves out of our love for Christ. We want to be bond servants. We want to be serving Christ. So that's the uh, uh, the the point there with um, uh, with that uh, with that point there. So obedience is the expected response of a Christian to the Lord. But again, obedience is more than just following uh, a set of rules. Obedience follows flows from a thankful heart. Our love for Christ is the basis for our willingness to deny ourselves and follow Christ. So we'll talk about what does it mean to deny ourselves? You know, that doesn't sound too fun, right? We don't want to <laughs> deny ourselves, but uh, what does it mean in the context of being a Christian? What does it mean to deny ourselves and to follow Christ to take up his cross? Uh, so in this sermon, we'll discuss what should be the response of our grateful heart that delights in the Lord and in his scriptures. Obeying God to earn favor or to pay back God for salvation is not true obedience and is actually the wrong attitude to have. So it's something, oh, you know, God is so good to me, I, I must uh, do something back in return or go to church. Not quite. That's not the, the right attitude to have. The attitude to have is because we love God so much, you know, that we are willing, we want to be obedient, we seek after his will. So, uh, so that's uh, the point there. So related to obedience flowing from the heart is the truth that we Christians have God's law written in our hearts. You know, we as Christians, we're no longer under the old covenant as revealed in the Old Testament. You know, the Old Testament with its fire and brimstone, it's a little bit harsh, you know, a lot of punitive, you know, actions there. Of course, God demands, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to get around that, you know, the Israelites had to, you know, make uh, regular uh, sacrificial offerings to God. Um, you know, to propitiate, you know, to uh, cover up the, for their sins, to atone for their sins. Um, so the law was mainly external. You must do these certain actions uh, because of your sin uh, in order to satisfy God. But now we live under the new covenant as revealed in the New Testament. We live under the covenant, the new covenant of faith, uh, of, of grace. You know, we have uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, who God sent, of course, to die for our sins, to die that death that those uh, sacrificial offerings had done in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant. Um, now, in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, the law is internal to us because we have the Holy Spirit residing in us, again, by the grace of God the Father. He gives us the Holy Spirit. And so we have actually the law written into our hearts. Um, so because of that, we've internalized the Holy Spirit you know, out of that, you know, out of the love of Jesus Christ um, that should be residing in our hearts, that's, you know, uh, from which uh, our obedience should flow. We need to, uh, you know, uh, be, uh, you know, uh, our response should be of a willing heart, of a loving heart to obey Christ and follow um, God's will. Okay, so some questions to ask of ourselves as we uh, head into our, uh, uh, as we delve deeper into this topic. How can I become more obedient to Christ? So these are some questions uh, uh, we'll uh, think about, uh, hopefully uh, 
some of the material here will help us to uh, answer some of these questions. And uh, what does it mean to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Christ? So again, uh, the challenge, at least for me, in presenting this material from the from the lesson series is, um, you know, yes, we have these generalities, but what does it mean? And I think the uh, the challenge for me is, uh, you know, what practically, how do we apply this? You know, what does it mean for myself to deny ourselves and to take up our cross and follow Christ? So we'll kind of start talking about uh, uh, some of the more um, uh, practical nuts and bolts of how do we apply this uh, information to a truly living a life that is obedient uh, to Christ. So again, since Christians are free from the slavery of the law under the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and this made slaves to God, we are free to serve God with love and joy and not under compulsion. Love sums up the Christian's motivation for obedience. So everything is done out of an attitude and spirit of love for Jesus Christ, and by extension, love for our fellow uh, Christians and love for the world, and that's why uh, we want to uh, evangelize and share the good news and spread the love that God gives us to those who may not have heard um, about the good news. Okay, so let's go into um, uh, each of these uh, points here, the call to obedience. Um, so the call to obey God's command. So Jesus said in uh, John 14, 15, uh, if you love me, keep my commands. Um, so real clearly right there, you know, uh, if we love Jesus and uh, those of us who have accepted Jesus into hearts and maybe our friends or other Christians that uh, may be attending other churches uh, that you may encounter at work, at school, uh, they say, oh, they're Christians. But if they truly love Jesus, uh, keep my commands. They, uh, they uh, you know, that's a, a fundamental call here to obey God's commands, keep my commands. And uh, um, it uh, you know should show in their actions and what they do. Um, moving on again to James one twenty two. Uh, this is again a very short verse. You know James of all the books in the New Testament. I think of course, as you know, it's the most practical, right? What does it mean? You know, a practical Christianity. Um, James one twenty two. Uh, what is expected of those who hear God's word? Do what it says. You know, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So it all kind of ties back now. Remember uh, the last lesson topic was on evangelism. And remember we talked about, well, how do we share um, our uh, faith, our love of Jesus Christ with others? And the number one thing is to model, you know, the Christian lifestyle, to model, you know, to live a life that is above reproach, you know, that uh, shows the world, yes, we're Christians, we're followers of Christ, we want to be more Christ-like. And so we want to be very careful that we don't do anything that's like, oh, that person did such and such, you know, it's, uh, you know, they, they, they can see uh, maybe uh, something that we didn't do that didn't glorify God, that uh, is kind of, uh, you know, not something that we might be proud of, and so that might give an opportunity for those who do not know Christ, who do not know the gospel, the good news, and who are looking for every opportunity to detract from or criticize the gospel to say, hey, that, 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 that is you know, that's uh, maybe even a little hypocritical. So, so yeah, so we have to avoid those instances and, uh, you know, live a life that exemplifies, you know, our status as God's children. Um, do what the Word says, um, keep God's commands, and uh, to, again, live a life that is worthy of being uh, children of Christ, to live a life towards, striving towards being Christ-like. So moving on to the next topic here, the call to follow Christ. So here we go with Luke 9, 23. Again, the words of Jesus. What is required of a Christian, of a person, who his words right here? Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the cross daily and follow me. So, okay, so let's break this down a little bit. What does it mean um, to deny ourselves, right? Okay, so yeah, these are the words of Jesus. Luke 9, 23, deny ourselves. Um, deny themselves and must take up the cross daily and follow me. So what does it mean to deny ourselves? So I was thinking about that. So, hmm, how, how do we apply that? Uh, you know, again, it doesn't sound too fun, right? We don't want to deny ourselves. Uh, you know, certainly we don't deny ourselves uh, what, uh, whatever we like. We don't want to deny ourselves like food, right? Uh, you know, a good night's sleep, uh, you know, uh, friends, fun, fellowship. So yeah, we, we don't want to deny ourselves that, but you know, we, we think about ourselves, again, uh, tying back to uh, modeling our lives, exemplifying Christ in our lives. Sometimes 
Again, you've heard of this, uh, this concept that we are in this world, but not of this world, right? So sometimes as Christians, we have to remove ourselves from some of the things that this world uh, values or, uh, 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 you know, uh, per pursues, um, you know, because, uh, you know, one example, uh, you know, I used to uh, um, work in Alabama. So I had a lot of uh, coworkers who, um, you know, are uh, uh, Christians, or at least they say they are. And one in particular, I remember, and she really did model, for me at least, uh, uh, she was our, uh, one of our coworkers. Um, she, for me, modeled in not just what she says she's, you know, confessing as a Christian, but what she, uh, some of her, um, her, uh, her, her deeds. So I remember one Christmas, uh, it was uh, another coworker who gave us, uh, like, lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and so for some of us, yeah, it's okay, you know, sure, you know, I thought they ought to win a lottery. But for her, I really admire her, she says, I'm sorry, Bob, I can't accept this because, um, you know, it, it goes against what I believe as a Christian because I'm, I'm you know, uh, it goes on with the gambling and, you know, getting something for nothing. So for her, it was uh, an opportunity, it was a, a moment where she had to enact what she believed in. And so for her, I really admired that. I kind of accept them. Oh, she thought about it. <laughs> Should I be accepting this? You know. So for her, she denied herself that opportunity, that pleasure of, oh, maybe I'm gonna win the lottery in, in the second range. I don't have to work here anymore. So, but no, you know, she said, no, this is not something I, I believe in. And as a Christian, that's something I'm gonna deny myself. Um, you know, the, the pleasure, the opportunity of, of gaining something for nothing. Because for me, you know, that's what. Uh, you know, uh, reading the scriptures, that's how she discerned, you know, uh, what God wants for her, that no, you, you don't want to do that. So, um, uh, so yes, yeah, so I really admire her for that. So that's just one instance. I know it's small, you know, but, you know, these things add up. So how do you practice your faith? How do you sometimes deny, you know, uh, yourselves living in this world that may not have values, that have values that may be inconsistent with what we follow in God's word? Um, so, uh, you know, uh, we have to be careful. I'm just speaking again in more general terms here. You know, uh, uh, you know things uh, people, uh, maybe non-Christians uh, say, or the movies they watch, or the behaviors they conduct. And so it looks fun, you know, but uh, it may not glorify God. It may not, if we partake in it, you know, it, it, may, it would not exemplify our Christ-like um, uh, mission to follow Christ. So just think about that. You know, some instances uh, as uh, we approach this, you know, as we, uh, you know, go to work, as we uh, go about our, our daily lives, we have opportunities uh, to show that we have Christ in our lives. And so uh, again, just be careful, things that may not, if we partake in those things, that may not glorify Christ and may not be a good witness. So, so that's kind of what I think about denying ourselves. So the same thing, thinking about cross daily, you know, of course, the cross is the ultimate symbol of Christ's suffering, his ultimate sacrifice for us on the, on the cross. Um, so for us, what does it mean to take our cross daily? So that also means, you know, uh, you know, sacrificing something, you know, because we are Christians, because we are set apart as a, uh, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, as, as uh, Peter says, you know, sometimes we do have to deny ourselves. Sometimes we do have to take up our cross and uh, you know, sacrifice ourselves um, for something that uh, may look fun, may look uh, you know something we you know the world likes or wants to do. But as Christians, uh, we don't particularly want to follow that, and so we must always follow Christ. We must always look to the cross. So, just some thoughts there about Luke nine twenty three, the call to follow Christ there. So, moving on to the call to uh, submission. Moving on here. So how should we present ourselves to God? So we're kind of leading towards this. Um, so here is what uh, Paul wrote in Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So yeah, wow, great uh, aspiring words. I mean, we want to aspire to that. We want to be that living sacrifice um, because, again, uh, we were bought at a price. You know, Jesus died on his, you know, that uh, death on the cross, that physical and spiritual death on the cross where he was separated from God the Father for those three days. Um, 
you know, or, uh, so we haven't bought at that price. So we ourselves, you know, need to be that living sacrifice to present ourselves as holy and pleasing to God. This is an act of worship, a true, uh, an act of true and proper worship. So again, these are, you know, something we aspire to, but in, in, in the reality, a lot of times we do fail. You know, we, we are humans, you know, we're still imperfect. Paul himself, you know, we, all of us will fall short in our obedience to God. Paul knew the struggle all too well. So remember in Romans chapter 7, that was uh, a part in Romans, well, hey, you know, you know, Paul was writing about, uh, you know, uh, again, the gospel, the, you know, uh, the New Testament all distilled in the book of Romans. And then he kind of pauses in Romans chapter 7. And for me, when I got to that, because I'm, hmm, he talks about, you know, uh, and this is the part where I couldn't quite understand, he talks about, you know, uh, the, the, the groanings, the, you know, the, um, you know, the, the, the pangs or something about, uh, you know, his failures. It's talking about his failures to even live up to, uh, to these words of being a, a living sacrifice, to, uh, to be a witness for Christ at all times. We will fail, you know, it's, uh, it's a given. But like Paul, you know, we as Christians should pursue obedience by denying ourselves, uh, as Luke 9, 23 says, that we talked about earlier in offering our lives um, to God as Romans 12 once says. So we will fail, we will fall short sometimes, but uh, that should, you know, uh, we should just you know, go back on track and say, yes, you know, we, we failed, but we need to come to we need to come back and deny ourselves, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, again, to be careful of what we uh, model and exemplify in our daily lifestyles to the rest of this world, go back on track and then, uh, and uh, again, offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, pleasing and holy uh, to God. Um, but again, it's a struggle. You know, it's, it's not saying this is something that comes easy, but it's a lifelong mission. It's a lifelong endeavor um, for us to, uh, to follow. Okay. So let's move on here. So this is actually the uh, memory verse or a key verse that uh, is uh, the theme of this sermon. So let's go ahead and read this uh, twice. Let's go ahead and read this twice. This comes from 1 John 2, 3 through 4. So this talks about um, the relationship between uh, knowing God and loving him, loving Jesus Christ, and then obeying him. And this is how we do it. So let's go ahead and read this together twice. Now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So one more time. Now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So real clearly, these two verses show the relationships. If we claim to know God, if we claim to know Jesus Christ, as our personal Lord and Savior, we must keep his commands. We must obey his word. We must follow his word. And so the uh, the opposite of that, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. So again, it kind of ties back to uh, talking about, you know, the first uh, thing about evangelizing, sharing our faith with others, is to model ourselves, you know, model our lifestyles, um, to show that we follow God's word, that we should that we follow his commands. If we say we love him, if we say we're Christians, we must do that. Because right here, John says, and those that say, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, you know, maybe does something that does not glorify God, that does something the rest of the world indulges in and, uh, and pursues and values that is against God's will. You know, uh, John real clearly says that person is a liar and the truth is not in him. So again, uh, it goes back to we, you know, uh, having to uh, model our lives, our lifestyles, uh, to show that we have Christ in us. Um, so again, what does obeying the word of God demonstrate? That we have come to know him. Um, and uh, what does continuous disobedience to the word of God indicate? That we don't know God and the truth is not in us. So those are the two concepts that this memory verse tells us. Note here that uh, this, um, these two verses uh, refer to knowing Christ twice. It repeats that twice. You know, it says here, um, now by this, if we know that we know him, um, if we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, the truth is not in 
him. So it refer references knowing Christ twice in these two verses. So again, what does it mean to know Christ? Those who know Christ will love him and obey his word. Obedience must come from a joyful heart uh, that flows from our love for Christ. We obey because we want to, not because we have to. Again, it's not about paying God back for, uh, you know, uh, giving us a good day or uh, passing an A on the test or, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, doing having something that's good in our lives, or you know, it's not about paying God back for His grace, His uh, mercy that He uh, merits us, He gives us, but because we love to. It's not because we're forced to do it, but because we love to. We obey because we want to, not because we have to. So again, it all comes from the attitude and the spirit of love. So now let's move on here. Um, we will now cover some examples of disobedience, and next time we'll then move over to some examples of obedience, and that will draw again from Hebrews chapter 11. You know, uh, Egan and Hazard Lander, we covered that uh, last week. You know, that again is a key chapter in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11, examples of faith, examples of obedience to God. You know, they model for us in their lifestyles, you know, uh, those, uh, those heroes of faith, Abraham, Stephen, I remember he's one of the, the guys mentioned in that chapter 11 who was stoned. Um, so those guys uh, that were, um, that modeled the faith, you know, those are examples of obedience. So now we'll talk first about some, first of all, some examples of disobedience from the Bible. Um, so we come first to Paul, uh, to Saul, sorry, this is Saul from the Old Testament. Comes from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 16 through 23. So just to set the scene here a little bit, uh, this is where God um, told uh, Saul, you know, you must kill the Amalekites. So these were the, the Canaanite peoples that were in the promised land. They were evil people. They killed other people. They were um, idolaters. You know, they were just unclean. They had to be blotted from the sight of God. I know that sounds harsh, but that's what God commanded. God commands, you know, uh, total obedience. And so uh, God told King Saul, you must kill all the Amalekites, destroy their livestock, their sheep, their goats, women, men, and children, you know, the king. You must destroy all of that because they're evil in my sight. They must be blotted away from this promised land that, that, uh, that is yours. Um, and uh, so uh, we remember, though, in, in, in this chapter in 1 Samuel, that instead of being completely obedient to God's command, Instead of completely destroying the Amalekites, destroying the people, you know, destroying the livestock, you know, what did Saul, King Saul do? You know, oh, he wanted to uh, select the best cattle, the best sheep, you know, uh, to say, he said uh, to, uh, to offer as sacrifices to God. And so uh, remember when Samuel approached him, what is this lowing of cattle I hear? You know, what is this bleeding of sheep? I didn't... The God saying to destroy everything, and then you know Saul, uh, you know, wasn't really, uh, you know, I, again, I'm not sure what was in heart, his heart, but he said, well, I'm going to save this, the choices of the cattle and the sheep to sacrifice to your Lord. Um, but instead of being completely obedient to God's command, you know, King Saul substituted his own way of worship. He thought that was his own way of worship, and excused his disobedience. He outright was disobedient uh, to God in uh, in what he did. But this is what Samuel, Samuel, one of the, the, the prophets in the Old Testament, this is what Samuel replied here. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying God, obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of ram. So, you know, King Saul, yes, you know, he was thinking of sacrificing to God, to please God, to, uh, you know, uh, to atone for his sins, but no, you know, Saul, Samuel is saying, you know, to obey is better than sacrifice, so Saul did something he shouldn't have, or he should have done something that he didn't do, which is to completely destroy the Amalekites. To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams, for rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. So these are uh, you know, uh, quite serious comparisons that Samuel makes here because uh, he char you know, Saul was guilty of, of rebellion, of being arrogant, of, uh, you know, uh, disobeying God. And Samuel says right here, for rebelling 
um, for disobeying God is like the sin of divination. So divination is like, uh, you know, uh, telling the future prophecy, you know, we're not supposed to do that because only God knows the future. Um, so uh, it ties in with, uh, you know, the black arts and sorcery. So, you know, Samuel is saying rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance is like the evil of idolatry. So, uh, you know, being arrogant, being disobedient to God is like, Actually, just worshiping is no better than worshiping an idol. Um, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. So there's a consequence to disobeying, disobeying God. Serious consequences. Here, and we'll see in the next slide, or last slide, we'll see a very serious consequence that the uh, Israelites uh, incurred upon themselves as a result of disobeying God. So here, you know, because uh, Saul disobeyed God, um, God rejected him as king. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. And so from then on, uh, Samuel, I think uh, I read further on in this chapter, never saw uh, Saul again. Saul continued. Of course, then we have uh, uh, King David, who ultimately God uh, appointed and uh, succeeded and uh, 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 overcame Saul. So consequences to disobedience. And so finally, we come to this example um, the people of Israel themselves. Um, so this comes from, uh, again, one of the prophets, uh, I guess he's one of the minor prophets, uh, Zechariah, um, where uh, you know, uh, God tells him uh, to tell the people of Israel about, you know, uh, this, the setting of here, again, that the people were, uh, you know, as throughout Old Testament history, the people turned their backs against God refuse to listen to God's word, refuse to listen to his appointed prophets. Um, and there are consequences here. So here is what Zechariah, uh, the Holy Spirit, God told Zechariah to write down here. But they refused to pay attention. Stubbornly, they turned their backs and covered their ears. They made their hearts as hard as flint and would not listen to the law or to the words that the Lord Almighty had sent by his spirit through the earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. When I called, they did not listen. So when they called, I would not listen, says the Lord Almighty. I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations where they were strangers. The land they left behind them was so desolate that no one traveled through it. This is how they made the pleasant land desolate. So here we see the people themselves, the people of Israel, um, Israel and, of course, Judah, the, remember the, the two kingdoms separated, they refused to pay attention to God's instruction. As a result, God became very angry and would not listen to their prayers. So even though the people continue to offer their prayers, continue to offer their sacrifices, no, nope, you know, God turned his back on them because they turned their backs on him. And so remember in the previous slide, you know, to obey is better than sacrifice. So even though the people continued to offer sacrifices, to offer the prayers up in sacrifice, God would not listen to them. God became very angry because they themselves had turned away from God. So what was the consequence? And this is a consequence that reverberated throughout Old Testament history, New Testament, and even in our modern times. God scattered the Israelite people throughout the whole world as strangers from their homeland, the, the land, the homeland that God had given them was laid desolate. So we know it was overrun by uh, the Persians, the Babylonians, um, uh, the Romans. Um, and in the modern age, and only recently did God restore uh, the Jewish people back to their homeland. But still, you know, the, the reverberations of their historic disobedience to God can be felt, you know, even to this modern day, you know, they, you know, had been scattered throughout the whole world. I think there were even some, uh, uh, Jews in, in China. I think that some had landed, you know, in, uh, in Shanghai and uh, uh, historically in Kaifeng. So yeah, it's amazing that, uh, you know, that again, God is a man of his word. You know, he says this to his prophets that the, his own people, that his own people that he chose, that he loved, if they disobeyed him, if they turned against him, he would scatter them to the four corners of the earth, um, scatter them to the winds. And the consequences are still felt today. The, the tensions in the Middle East as the as the Jewish people come back to the homeland, you know, and tensions right now. So yeah, again, this is all in God's divine plan. So it really shows the consequences of disobedience can be really serious. And for the Israelite people, it reverberated throughout their entire history. Um, so, uh, so again, it shows us why, you know, we claim to love God and we claim to have uh, Jesus Christ in our hearts. 
If we claim to have the word in our hearts, we ourselves, in our own way, must be obedient uh, to God to follow Him. Otherwise, you know, there, there will be consequences. You know, uh, you know, uh, not as dramatic as as uh, Saul and, and the Israelite people, perhaps, but uh, nevertheless, uh, consequences uh, for ourselves if we uh, disobey and not follow uh, God and, uh, and exemplify Christ in our lives. So some things to think about. I don't want to end so seriously, but uh, but yeah, you know, again, uh, we I think what we want to do, of course, is to follow Christ. That's our lifelong goal, our lifelong mission. Um, and again, uh, not just out of a true loving heart, but for others to, to show. Because we model others are looking at us, you know, uh, because we're Christians, and uh, and so uh, to follow to exemplify Christ's life. Sometimes we will fall short, but the point there is, of course, to acknowledge that, to repent, and come back and to continue in this lifelong endeavor. So we'll move on, uh, we'll adjourn for now, and next time we'll go to the examples of obedience, the positive examples, and then we'll move on from there. So let's go ahead and bow um, to the Lord in prayer. So Father God, again, we thank you for all of us here uh, this morning uh, to worship you, um, to, uh, 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 to sing your praises, to glorify you, and also now to uh, learn more about what you tell us to do to, to be obedient to you, Lord. And we learned this morning that uh, uh, if we truly love you, if we uh, truly have the Holy Spirit in our hearts, um, that we must have the word in our hearts, that we must follow your will, your word. Uh, we must exemplify um, the word in our lives. We must put into practical use, apply the word into our lives, Lord. Um, so this is a lifelong challenge that you lay before us, a challenge that we gladly accept out of the love for us love for you that we have, Father, because you first loved us. You offered your son, Jesus Christ, to die that ultimate death, that ultimate sacrifice for us on the cross. Even though he did not deserve it, he was completely blameless and pure. He exemplified for us uh, what it means to be righteous, to be called children of God. So um, so uh, I pray that we just think about that, uh, that we think for ourselves how we, in our own individual way, uh, follow your will, um, demonstrate Christ-like uh, values and attitudes and behaviors in our own lives uh, so that we might uh, strengthen fellow Christians and be a witness for those who do not know you, Lord, yet. Uh, because that is uh, one of the first things we must do as we share the good news, the gospel, with others who may not have uh, known you, Lord, yet. So be with us now as we adjourn uh, for Sunday school, as we turn over this uh, uh, sanctuary to the uh, Chinese worship service. May you be with them, Lord. May we be with us as we uh, head into uh, the um, into the uh, uh, next hour, Lord. So be with us now as we adjourn. Um, and finally, I do pray for uh, Uncle Andy and Auntie Tan as they move forward during this time of transition. Please bless them. We're just so thankful that have been part of our ministry um, for these uh, last uh, few years. Um, and they have blessed us so much. And so we just pray that you continue to bless them, Lord, be with them as they uh, transition, um, and that you bring them back when they can, and that uh, that we glorify you uh, and continue to glorify you as a result of their ministry here, Lord. Be with us now. We pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you.